A few months ago, I did a video on Emacs, and that video was done after a few weeks of actually using Emacs as a replacement for Vim. And I had thoughts on it, and the underlying conclusion that I had, or the overwhelming conclusion that I had, was that Emacs is just not for me. And one of the biggest reasons was is that there was just too many features there that I didn't use. And I don't think that I articulated the problem all that well. Mostly because I still get tons of comments, especially on that one video where I listed the top five GUI text editors. And everyone was like, why didn't you include Emacs on this? And my response to several people was, Emacs is not a text editor. It's an operating system. And that's what I want to talk about today, because I still have a lot of people who are asking me why I haven't given Emacs a fair shake. And it's probably true that I haven't given it a fair chance to actually be my daily driver, because when I used it, I really did just use it as a replacement for Vim, which, as a replacement for Vim, it's fine, but it has all this other stuff that goes along with it, and that is something that bothers me. So my biggest problem with Emacs isn't that it's a bad replacement for Vim. It's that it's bloated. And I don't like to use the word bloat because I don't really care about bloat as, you know, all the Linux bros would probably say, to, you know, talk about it. But I really do feel that way with Emacs. Now, I know what the Emacs guys are going to say. Emacs isn't bloated. It's just a programming language. It's just a Lisp interpreter or whatever it's called. And sure, technologically, that's true. It, it, it's true that all Emacs is, is a Lisp or ELISP interpreter. That's what it does. And it has a whole bunch of programs built on top of that functionality. And that's where you get me, is because what you're really talking about here, when you talk about Emacs, most people aren't talking about the fact that it's a, a Lisp interpreter. They're talking about the fact that it has all this functionality. So it's exactly what the argument is about Linux. When you really when you talk about, when someone says Linux, they're not really talking about the kernel, even though that's specifically what Linux refers to. Really what they're talking about is GNU slash Linux, and that encompasses everything that makes up a Linux system, really. But nobody says GNU slash Linux, they just say Linux. And when somebody comes up to me and says, you use Linux, right? I know what they're talking about, right? It doesn't confuse me. It doesn't make me think, well, you know, technically I use the Linux kernel, but I also use the GNU utilities and all this stuff. But I know that they're talking about the whole kit and caboodle. It's the same thing with Emacs. When someone says, hey, you use Emacs, they're not talking about the ELISP interpreter, they're talking about the whole kit and caboodle, the stuff that comes on top of it, the email client, the games, the the torrent client, all this stuff that just is there. Now, a lot of that stuff isn't there by default, even though some of it is. The point is, is that it is possible to do just a ton of stuff in Emacs, and when someone tells you or asks you, do you use Emacs, you're talking about all of it. And really, when it comes down to it, that's my biggest problem, is that it's not just one thing, as the Emacs guys likes to tell me. It's a ton of different stuff, and it feels bloated. In addition to just being a text editor, Emacs also has a terminal emulator baked inside of it. It also has games baked inside of it. It also has a Git client baked inside of it. It has a password manager baked inside of it. It has a to-do list baked inside of it. I could go on and on and on and on. It literally has just a ton of stuff. Now, a lot of that stuff ties into the functionality of being a, like, an IDE, but the point is, is that that stuff is still there. It's in a conglomeration of just many, many things. So, when someone argues that Emacs is just an ELISP interpreter, it doesn't fly with me because all that stuff is there. Now, some of it's not there by default completely there. Like, if you download Doom Emacs and you want to get all this stuff in there, you have to uncomment something and rebuild it in order to actually get that package to be functional. But the point is, is that it's there. It's kind of like Vim plugins, but a little worse, in my opinion, because, like, you can't, as far as I know, make Gim make Vim have games. Like, it's, like you can't have Tetris inside of Vim. Maybe it'd be cool if he could. I don't know, but I don't. Uh, I'm assuming that there's no way to actually have a, a Tetris game inside them. It's just not something that is there, and out of, by default, Emacs has that. 
Now, I know I'm kind of harping about the games, but that's the key, that's the oddest thing that sticks out every time I think of Emacs is that why does this have so much stuff in it? I'm already using an operating system. I don't need to use another embedded operating system inside of my operating system. It's like I, I use Linux. It, it does stuff. And Emacs just doesn't really fit in with my idea of like the Unix philosophy. Like I don't, for the most part, I don't give a crap about the Unix philosophy, but the Emacs fanboys will always tell you that the Emacs really is the best example of the Unix philosophy. Because all it is, is an Emacs interpreter. That's all it does. It does one thing, it does it well. And, again, technologically, that's true. But when you look at it as a whole, just like you look at Linux as a whole, and when I say Linux, I mean GNU slash Linux, it does way more than that, and some of the stuff is a conglomeration of stuff that doesn't really make sense. It feels like it's literally trying to do everything. Like, they make a window manager based on Emacs, that people use EXWM. I don't know whether or not it's good or not. Never tried it, but it's there. And that is a great example of why I don't like Emacs is because it literally tries to replace every single thing. Now, the reason why I thought about this topic was that I was going through DT's old videos today and I saw this video here, replacing all of my programs with Emacs. And that's exactly the reason why I don't use Emacs. I don't want to replace all my programs with Emacs. Now, nobody says I have to, obviously. But the point is, is that you can, and that's the reason why I don't do it, is because I don't want to replace my terminal with Emacs. I don't want to replace my word processor with Emacs. Like, I don't use a word processor anymore, but I don't really want to have my terminal and all that stuff all together in one place. Maybe that's appealing to some people, having all of your, like your email client right there inside of your program that you use for everything else. Maybe that's something that they're interested in. I don't really consider that something that is useful for my workflow. Now, there's a part of me that realizes that I'm being hypocritical here because I try to get everything in my workflow to happen inside of the terminal. So if we consider Emacs analogous to the terminal itself, which it's not really, but if we could kind of think about it that way, then Emacs makes more sense and it makes me look a lot worse because I do go through and try to make all of my programs fit inside of a terminal workflow. I've started doing all my writing in Vim. I do as much of my file management inside of a file like Ranger or something. You know, I try to spend as much of my time inside of the terminal. So from that way of looking at it, you can kind of see where the Emacs guys come from and that they want to spend all their time in this one program. I want to spend all my time in a terminal. It's kind of the same thing. All that being said, Emacs is still not for me. And my biggest issue with all of this is that I still get comments and stuff about trying to get me to use Emacs. So I wanted to make this video about why I don't use Emacs. Even if some of it doesn't really make all that much sense to everybody, in my mind, in my little brain, Emacs does too much stuff and it just confuses me. At the end of the day, Emacs just is not for me. And I wanted to make a video about why it's not for me, e even though I've talked about it a few times before. So that is it for this video. I'm sure that in the comments I will have several people asking me or telling me that I'm wrong and that's fine because I mean at the end of the day you use what you like to use right that's the whole point of Linux the whole point of open source if you like Emacs if you don't care that it has all this extra stuff maybe you'll even like that it has all this extra stuff good for you congratulations you found something that is really nice I'm the same way like I said with the terminal like I do all my work in the terminal so that's good for me that's what makes Linux great so uh, comments in the comment section below make sure you hit the like and subscribe button i really do appreciate everybody who's done that we're getting really really close to 10,000 subscribers so if you haven't hit the subscribe button please do so it really does help you can follow me on twitter at linuxcast you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast before i go i'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons Sid A, devon patrick alfred maglin jack sam tools steve a separate linux garrick samuel mitchell arch center carbon data jeremy sean odin martin e, andy Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark, Venus 6, Vlad, and Primus. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.